Hello everyone. We thought we'd take a break from our usual travel videos today to talk about our top tips and impressions we had after visiting Raja Ampat. We were based out of Wasai for most of our trip and we did different excursions to different islands from there. So most of our tips are going to be pertinent for people who are visiting Raja Ampat and staying on the biggest island, which is Waigio in the town of Wasai. I wanted to put together this video in case you've ever thought about going to Raja Ampat. Just some things that we think you should be aware of and a few tips. Tip number one, Raja Ampat is an excellent place for scuba diving. But if you aren't into scuba diving, then we probably wouldn't recommend visiting. In order to get to Raja Ampat, you have to fly all the way over to West Papua and from there take at least a two hour ferry to the closest island. And even though we were based in Indonesia at the time, we had to take two flight segments and the two hour ferry. And one of those flight segments involved an overnight layover just to get there. While there are some beautiful areas on land to see in Raja Ampat, what really makes Raja Ampat worth visiting is the awesome scuba diving, which we have a video all about that and we'll link it up above. My cousin did a lot of snorkeling while she was there and she said it was very beautiful. So perhaps if you're really into snorkeling, that could kind of substitute for the scuba diving. Number two, Raja Ampat is not a budget friendly destination. In addition to the cost of the expensive flights getting to Raja Ampat, the homestays at the very cheapest cost about $30 per person per night, which for Indonesia is incredibly expensive. And we're talking very basic amenities, like maybe not even electricity, definitely not internet, no air conditioning, but it does include room and board. We ended up staying in a dive resort because my cousin really couldn't handle the idea of staying in a homestay, or else we probably would have gone with the homestay option because it is much more budget friendly than the dive resorts. Also, depending on where you stay in a homestay, there also is additional cost just to get out to a lot of the homestay sites. So when you're factoring in your cost for Raja Ampat, know that the boats there are really expensive to get anywhere. So just keep that in mind. Number three, in addition to the already expensive Raja Ampat, there are many other costs that are not completely transparent when you want to book any activities. Uh, so in other words, there's a lot of nickel and diming that goes on. I sat down and spoke with a guy at our resort and just said, okay, give me all of the costs for the dives that we want to do. And there was like a gear rental fee. There was also additional local attribution costs. Basically you pay villagers to go to certain dive sites. For some of the further away places, you have to pay extra fuel surcharges. So there's a lot of little costs that they don't tell you about upfront. So just make sure that before you book any activities, make sure that you understand exactly what is going into the cost. It feels like extra pronounced view as a tourist as being a money source. And we've traveled to a lot of developing countries. We're used to this to some extent, but it's felt like it was extra pronounced. And I think it's just because they don't get many tourists there. Number four. We noticed that there were hardly anyone in Raja Ampat. This was an impression we got right away. There are not many tourists who visit here, which is really great. We loved that aspect. When we first got to our dive resort, we were literally the only people. However, there were lots of signs that indicated that they were preparing for mass tourism. There was tons of construction going on. I see it in the next five to 10 years of being a really busy place. But right now, because it's not very populated, it, it felt like we kind of went during the right time. Number five, an unfortunate takeaway we had after spending time there was that we are not sure how much longer their awesome coral reef will be there. We noticed a lot of trash in waterways and they clean it up around the dive resorts and around major attractions. However, there's lots of packaged food there. And as a result, all the plastic just seems to end up in the waterways. They seem to lack the infrastructure for garbage management. I mean, you see that in a lot of places, but it, was, it felt like extra pronounced in West Papua. The closest big city to Raja Ampat is where we saw this most pronounced. We saw a waterway just completely filled with water bottles. 
So one of the main takeaways here is that although the coral and the wildlife there is really beautiful and in great condition right now, it's possible that if things don't improve and litter keeps filling their oceans, that things could get a lot worse. Number six. Rent a scooter. We did this actually for the first time in Raja Ampat and we absolutely loved it. It was also a great place to learn to ride a scooter because it is so rural that there's not a lot of traffic that you have to compete with or worry about running into. It's also an excellent way to see the island and much cheaper than having to pay for a taxi. For taxis, it seemed like there was a minimum $14 charge even for going just a short distance. So, and you can rent a scooter for $10 a day and the gas is really cheap. So we definitely would highly recommend renting a scooter if you're gonna be visiting YGO Island in Raja Ampat. And finally, number seven, our last tip or impression is to learn some Indonesian. This will take you a long way in West Papua in general and specifically Raja Ampat because not a lot of people speak English and Indonesian is a relatively simple language to learn from what I understand. And it's one of my biggest regrets not learning before coming here. However, you can get by to some extent with Google Translate. We still noticed a little bit of challenges with communicating, but it does help quite a bit because one thing we noticed about the culture there in West Papua and in Indonesia actually in general is that people tend to act like they understand what you're saying, but really they, they don't understand. Definitely download Google Translate offline. We learned that in our next episode, you'll see. Also learn some basic phrases clarify as much as possible. Don't assume anyone understands, especially if you have dietary restrictions like Alex and I were both vegetarian. Make sure you write it out in Google Translate, make it very clear or know the words. Alex knows the words for, you know, no fish, no chicken, no beef, all those things. You need to list every single meat product out. All right, so that's it. In conclusion, definitely check out our first two videos we have. We did one where we just kind of did an overview of our whole trip in Raja Ampat. And then we did one where we touched base on our favorite dives in Raja Ampat. Because we feel like this, this video almost seems a little bit negative and we don't want to give that impression. We did really enjoy it. And if you see those videos, you'll see that we really had a lot of um, enjoyment in it. We just were wanted to make it clear that like, if someone decides to put this on their bucket list, that they know what to expect. And get ready for our next episode because, oh man, we end up in such a disaster. Probably our worst travel experience. Ever. It was so bad. Oh my goodness. Honestly, it's embarrassing. We both are graduate degree educated people and we didn't use very common sense and got into quite a big mess. This is our third day stuck on this remote island. We have to get out of here. I'm feeling so great. And I'm honestly worried we're going to be trapped here. I'm so pissed right now. Uh, we don't have more money. It's our screw. This is our only way out of here. 